Hi guys, good morning. Wednesday the 30th of October, just gone at 8 o'clock here in London. As you can see on my right hand side, I've gone for the double whammy of Boris and Nigel. Uh, reason being, I, I believe the one on the left could deliver the Brexit and the one on the right could ruin it. And I'll, I'll come on to why that could well be the case as we have all but confirmed uh, an election on the 12th of December. So we'll have a, a quick start by running over the charts from yesterday uh, and head over to the, the main stories uh, which concern obviously the election update uh, and then a look forward to uh, the FOMC rate decision uh, which we'll be covering live on our YouTube channel from half five uh, ahead of the 6 p.m. announcement obviously an hour earlier due to the clock change uh, that took place Sunday. Uh, so quick look over markets as they're trading now you can just see actually in the last 15 minutes or so the pound has just pushed higher taking out albeit very uh, briefly uh, yesterday's high just pushing above 129 on the futures quick 20 ticks push uh, to the upside stocks in Europe contrast to yesterday which were down at the open uh, just started uh, more positively today you can see overall yesterday while choppy conditions were expected uh, there was a couple of opportunities and, and we'll go through those now um, just think obviously ahead of uh, the week really beginning from today we've got a good data calendar obviously you've got the the brexit updates you've got uh, some earnings coming out today this morning and then uh, later today as well it really felt like today is going to be where the, the week really begins and you can see stocks when they push lower also did the same in the s p that uh, led us to what was the previous high uh, that we had on monday and that was a good opportunity to get long and uh, also the trend line breaks break above morning resistance led to further good opportunities to the upside on the flip side at the same time you had gold which did push lower actually in the morning uh, no real reason for it just a big order coming through and as with the many times that this does happen you end up getting that full reversal uh, from that triple bottom as well you can see here taking place and finishing up around four o'clock currency wise euro did break a, a nice trend line actually i think i've got the the chart still marked up and, and that provided a bit of an opportunity uh, just i guess a shame and, and we were talking in the in the chat room at the time just a shame it happened really uh, before the fed because certainly medium term wise it would have been a, a decent opportunity as well you can see the break of this trend uh, leading to a push uh, above its R1 on the day and that is actually confirmed this morning uh, as well. The pound relatively choppy it has to be said uh, but did push higher uh, throughout the morning on the, the idea that Labour had confirmed that they are down for December uh, the election uh, and then just drifted lower into really the confirmation of that and we have of course pushed on today as well. Also oil uh, good opportunities it has to be said for, for the brave that Fancy the, the support, the retest of what had been such a strong, strong resistance previously. You can see we came down and tested that around 54.68, really strong zone, and, and led to a, a dollar and a bit recovery from that level uh, after breaking the 55.40 handle uh, around that area uh, during the day. So we'll go through the APIs and the DOEs later, uh, of course, as uh, we, we had uh, the DOE at an earlier time as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, relatively choppy day, but there were still some opportunities. I guess one overall to, to sit on the hands, whereas today, certainly opportunity wise, I think there's going to be a lot more, uh, lot more opportunities, not just from obviously evening the FOMC, but before that as well as on the data calendar, we have some, uh, some good points coming out. Um, so yeah, make sure you do you know join us from from half five. We'll have the chat function. So any questions, feel free to to you know put those uh, in as well. Uh, yesterday, just going to go quickly over the data uh, as well. The only really point of note to to have was the consumer confidence, which came in slightly worse than expected, 125.9 compared to that 128. So not. A massive difference in the US of course ahead of the, the FOMC didn't really react too much to it overnight you had some inline um, Aussie dollar uh, inflation numbers it has actually rise since then but more so on the weakness of the dollar you've seen that in both the euro and the pound this morning uh, coming through so those inflation numbers pretty much 
uh, in line. Quick look at the data calendar before we get into uh, the meat uh, of the briefing. And you can just see throughout the whole day, it's, it's, it's jam-packed. We've had the Aussie numbers that we just talked about. You've got German unemployment change and rate at 8.55, so coming up in less than an hour. 10 o'clock, e economic sentiment out of the EU, along with industrial and services sentiment, consumer confidence. You've got the ADP numbers an hour earlier than usual because of that clock change. German preliminary uh, inflation numbers. Bank of Canada rate decision. DOE at uh, 2.30 and then the Fed from 6 o'clock and Jerome Powell speaking half an hour later. Could be an incredible day and that's of course not with any Brexit comments uh, uh, listed in there as well. So I'm looking forward to it, should be a good one. Uh, obviously the main UK Brexit general election uh, chat has been confirmed as, well all but confirmed should we say, the timetable for today is just worth keeping an, an eye out, an ear out uh, on this, is that the House of Lords will uh, hold a vote on the election later today. They're expected to approve. It would be a pretty much pretty big shock if they were not going to, to, to make it law uh, of the election by the end of the week. So this would be uh, December the 12th. There was a couple of rumours floating about that it was going to be either the 9th or the 11th, and actually would have been the first uh, general election on a Wednesday in, well, many, many years. Um, it just so happens that it's going to be the first December election since 1923. Uh, so the first uh, December election in a very long time. Uh, so after the, the vote is approved uh, and they're making it law by the end of the week, November the 6th is another date to keep an eye on uh, as Parliament will be dissolved and therefore that five-week campaign can begin. Uh, I'm sure Conservatives will be n uh, you know, not looking to make the same mistakes as they did last time, where uh, certainly their campaign was was very limited, or certainly seen that way uh, anyway. A couple of theories on, um, on on turnout during winter elections. A good article here on uh, uh, on, the, on the BBC, just talking about some of the the, the, the points you would think of. Um, so you've got bad weather, obviously there. The day of the Brexit vote, the referendum, if you remember, there was a massive storm and uh, it was raining incredibly. Tubes were um, delayed um, and there was certainly uh, a grumble within London that people couldn't get home to, to vote. However, a uh, study from the University of Oxford actually said there's no correlation uh, between the weather and the turnout. So unfortunately, it seems that there was no excuse for that EU referendum. Uh, so that theory has been put to bed. The shorter days is absolutely one to, to think about, of course, as the nights get uh, well, come earlier and, and the days are shorter. Um, and therefore, there's already been rumours that at, uh, at polling stations there's going to be additional lighting uh, put in uh, as well. So that's something to, to bear in mind uh, as well going forward. Could it stop students voting? So this... You know, also yesterday, one of the amendments that Labour were looking to, to pass through, one of the votes was that 16-year-olds uh, um, would have the chance to. I mean, I'm not sure many 16-year-olds would, and certainly when I was 16, I'd rather have been uh, in a park drinking Super Strongbow. But, uh, yeah, that didn't get passed through. But could it stop students? Well, the, the most common end of... Uh, university December wise is, is being touted as 16th of December so uh, of course a lot of students may well be registered to vote where they are at uni so if it had been after then there could have been a bit of drama about that but it turns out not to be the case uh, as many uh, are finishing around 16th of December only a handful before and of course they could well change uh, their uh, postal vote uh, location if they did want to uh, as well. YouGov polling suggests 70% of students' votes were cast at their home constituency rather than their term time address. So this would be something that maybe Labour would want to you know, make sure that younger voters uh, would change or, or be able to, to vote for, for that as, uh, as well uh, going forward. Um, so I guess it, it comes on to, to you know, another good article here just on the, on the BBC, and this was sent out in the, in the morning research, just a, a simple guide on, on the election. But the questions, uh, I guess, why would, why would Boris even want the election? And it's really going to come down to the same reasons that Theresa May did 
uh, in in 2017. Of course, he didn't need to to have one until Dece uh, well until 2022. Um, but he's going to want to have more majority to pass through his deal and, and therefore effectively get Brexit done. So uh, that's the reason. It was the, pretty much the same reason Theresa May wanted it. Obviously, you can see from the two and a bit years since there, we've made no real progress uh, at all uh, going forward. Um, so the vote's going to obviously be, you know, as, as Jeremy Corbyn said, a, a once in a generation vote. We had one of those three years ago, of course, but so maybe not so much as once in a, a generation. But um, it's going to be one where a lot of the other policies are almost swept under the carpet. Of course, uh, their manifestos and the policies that they'll be going around will obviously have some significance. But it's worth noting, actually, just from 2015, um, what do voters, what do people feel most are in, in the most important issues facing Britain today? Obviously, you, you would have... Uh, the EU and Brexit up at the top, but interestingly, Im immigration and, and NHS have been on uh, the decline there uh, as well. So it will, I'm sure, come down to uh, their the Brexit stance. And, and worth just sort of going over that, you could um, argue the Brexit parties are going to, you know, still try and stick about with Leave on on the whole idea of a No Deal. The Lib Dems revoke Article 50. Labour, I mean, who knows. Uh, reno we're going to renegotiate the, uh, with the EU and then put that deal to a public vote is more likely not going to be their stance. I personally think they should you know, do what uh, the Lib Dems are doing and, and go down the route of you know, second referendum, revoke Article 50, let's go full on remain and actually you might see a really big pick up there, uh, whereas in the polls obviously they're struggling quite a bit at the moment. And of course Conservatives going down the route of leave with Boris's new uh, deal. So the point about um, Nigel Farage and why he was in the, uh, the the picture at the beginning of the briefing, you know, Boris at the moment, or Conservatives are obviously well in charge uh, of the polls at the moment, and that's I think fair enough. You know, he's he's come in and he's 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 perhaps been quite hawkish in in his chat, and that maybe that's what the, the country need and and what Theresa May slightly lacked, uh, and a lot of the Leave voters are quite united behind Boris and. If he doesn't mess it up, I think he wins uh, quite nicely in that we do get that majority. Whether we could actually leave on the 31st or not, because I think after the vote and everything come, everyone comes back, there's only 15 days before the 31st of Jan. Whether we can do that or not, I'm not too sure. But I think a Conservative win means Brexit does happen sooner rather than, than later. Uh, a lot of the Remain side are obviously spread out. You've got the flip side of Labour, the SNP, uh, Lib Dems as well, so they would have to be quite strategic about that um, on, on where voters would go and, and maybe they've got a, a plan the Remain side for that uh, as well. But also it's worth keeping an eye on, on Brexit Party. Does Nigel Farage start piping up again to really you know, say you know, this is uh, how we should do it, that Boris's deal isn't good enough, you know, like he has been saying a lot on the on his radio channel on, on LBC. If he's starting to you know pipe up again, he could well take a lot of those conservative leave voters away and therefore that majority comes under question. So it could ironically be the man that wanted Brexit uh, be the reason uh, that Brexit does not happen for quite a while again. So if I was Nigel, I would just sit tight if this is what you want. Um, but whether he could do that or not, I think, uh, will remain to be seen. Uh, it's been, a, I think, it's 1920s. Uh, it's been uh, either a Conservative or Labour uh, government uh, that's been in power. So, you know, while Lib Dems are, you know, starting to uh, arise from the ashes after, you know, the, a disastrous campaign not so long ago, uh, I think Remain, I think Labour really missed a trick here. And we might see a change in that. Um, over the coming five weeks uh, from November the 6th but yeah, time time will tell uh, shall we say uh, as well but yeah good graphic here just going over the uh, the important issues uh, here you've also got the UK general election 2017 just the, the voting uh, stance there a lot of blue seats just like Manchester City uh, on a match day uh, as well uh, so yeah you can see uh, this is the 2017 there as well, just going through. Uh, winners are chosen, you've got the general election numbers from there. 326 seats needed for a majority 
Uh, the last one, Conservatives, were only won the 318, hence the uh, coalition with the DUP. Labour 262, SNP 35. Voter turnout 68.7. I would say we're, we're going to get higher than that. I think if, uh, if there's decent odds on that, worth a, worth a go. 68.7 voter uh, turnout uh, as well. So today, worth keeping an eye just to see um, that it's passed through uh, the House of Lords, put into law. Uh, and then it's going to be a fun few weeks of polling uh, that's going to move markets and, and talks of that. Just before we move on to the Fed, let's get the chart of the pound up because I think you're going to have three scenarios. Let me just load this chart up and remove everything. So where are we trading now in the futures? Let's call it 129 on the dot. Conservative majority, big majority, I think you, you know, buy the end by December the 12th we're above 136 I do believe that I think there'll be a, a nice push from from there uh, as well if we were to have a Labour majority which I think is around 23 to 1 uh, which is obviously I think fair enough odds for now I'd, I'd see a, a, an also a push through what I see the only downside for the pound because I do see this general election as overall positive uh, the only downside would be a minority conservative or any minority really just more conf uh, more uh, uncertainty the deal less likely to be pushed through and we're back to uh, square one and 126 is traded uh, on december the 12th in my opinion so the risk reward looks pretty good from where we're, we're sitting now i think the the move higher recently is just the pricing out of that no deal no deal is just not going to happen uh, and we're going to have that general election also worth giving a shout out to uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Anthony Chung. Back uh, two months ago, I came across this and the, uh, the article he did on, on LinkedIn, just saying how the, his view remains that we are heading to a general election uh, as Parliament will now look to pressure a vote. No confidence, uh, well, which was explained by uh, an analyst. But just saying about the, 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 the idea that no deal is not going to happen, that we're going to need a general election. Uh, so pretty much bang on uh, here. You can see end result, no deal does not materialise uh, and the government secures a deal. Uh, from a GBP perspective, much more volatility to come over the coming weeks. That absolutely happened, but large rallies will come in due course. So pretty much bang on there from, from Anthony here. The general election all but confirmed. Uh, and I would say unless Boris can mess this up, uh, there's going to be uh, a nice rally to come. Time, of course, will tell, uh, though, as well. So 136 would be the target as things stand uh, if we can just get through the messy three weeks. It's not going to be a straight line, though. That's obviously worth pointing out uh, as well. So the Fed coming up uh, going to be one to an, an interesting one. I was just saying to, to Will, I, I personally believe this will be the last cut that we see um, as things stand. Uh, the, the market priced more dovishly than that, uh, but we'll come on to a couple of reasons uh, why. 90% uh, priced in at the moment by investors, uh, a, a 0.25 basis, basis point cut. However, Bloomberg's reading an article earlier, uh, their surveys have it more priced at 75%, so slightly more on the hawkish surprise there. Uh, and the general chat I've just seen from, from Twitter and reading articles is that we're almost expecting or starting to price in uh, in uh, in to the markets a hawkish cut here uh, as well rather than the, the usual dovish one all policymakers see risks from trade talks this is nothing new and weakness abroad those will generally still be um, i'm sure the the main comments that come through uh, but some uh, did view that the cuts in uh, july and september were sufficient enough uh, and uh, i'm sure there will be dissenters uh, about this cut if it was to happen. But 90 percent priced in from investors and uh, there's a nice graphic we'll come on to shortly uh, which says it might be more like 20 percent according to, to some surveys uh, as well. Speaking of what's been priced in you've got one man who is absolutely loving life and that has to be Donald Trump. He's got positive trade talks at the moment despite possible negative one from yesterday but overall he's happy you've got stocks that are on all-time highs you've got a fed that's about a cut for the third time i mean he's played an absolute blinder here it has to be said um death of ISIS. <laughs> yeah and the death of isis as well despite getting booed at the weekend for it 
uh, at a baseball match. Um, so worth uh, you know just pointing this out. You know, there the stocks can't just keep going and going and going uh, until the election. Um, so I think Trump will, if he's not happy today, if we do have a hawkish cut, he may well start to pick up some hawkish rhetoric on the uh, the trade front. Uh, and we could be due for a bit of a correction lower. Uh, I guess from a technical point of view, we're not far away from this incredible trend that was just so well respected going back to July. And that's looking to come in. We could get that today around 30, 59. Could that be a top? Technically, why not? Um, and then if we do have it on the, the hawkish side and Trump starts slamming home about China that they're not buying enough agricultural goods like he did on overnight, well, suddenly these stories you know, pick up more of a negative impetus and, and we do come uh, down uh, as well. We'll see. Time will tell. Um, Powell is likely to communicate a pause uh, while saying they're they are flexible with the economic outlook shift significantly. Uh, interestingly, uh, Powell is, is also following the playbook at the moment of a mentor, Alan Greenspan, who cut rates three times in mid-cycle adjustments. Of course, the word mid-cycle adjustment is how we started it back in uh, July. Uh, Greenspan did this 90, 95, 96 and 98 to counter risks. Um, September forecasts showed the FMC saw interest rates hitting a bottom this year before raising slightly in 2021. So next year to remain uh, at the levels they would be after to today. However, investors, as we were saying, slightly more dovish on this and they're actually pricing in another quarter point cut by mid 2020. So there's that difference between what the market are expecting and then what the Fed are suggesting. Hence why I, I, I'm on the Fed side that I do think this will be the last one and therefore we're gonna see that hawkish reaction and you see a bit of dollar strength come back in. You see stocks perhaps come under a touch of pressure and gold as well, but that could be a good opportunity to get in gold lower down as then Trump uh, returns more hawkish on trade talks. Uh, that's just my view at the moment, of course, to trade what you see, not what you think uh, as well. So yeah, a couple of um, uh, comments from uh, surveys here, surveys from, from Bloomberg. Bloomberg economics experts, officials to adopt a meeting by meeting approach to evaluating the need for additional stimulus so as to appease hawkish leaning members of the committee. However, from meeting to meeting in a slow growth, low inflation environment, officials will see greater need to provide additional uh, support uh, as well. The FOMC is divided between policymakers, uh, which favor insurance against risks from a manufacturing slump. We saw that as the worst in uh, a long time, the ISM number a couple of weeks ago. The trade war with China, it, while it is getting a bit better, uh, that's still obviously going to be, um, you know, a, a divisive issue. Brexit, I mean, we just saw on the the no deal being taken off the table in general election, stocks actually rallied and then uh, came under pressure of, of poor news, which hasn't really been the case. I have to say it was a bit of a shock to see uh, stocks globally really get a push of positive Brexit news, but that's starting to pick up now, become uh, a serious matter to, to consider. And of course, slower global growth is another issue they will consider uh, versus those who see domestic data largely supporting their outlook for solid growth. I mean, there's a lot of positive numbers still in the US, uh, unemployment uh, and employment numbers pretty good uh, overall in the grand scheme of things. And of course, stocks are on all time highs. Let's not forget uh, as well. So those that are going to be the dissenters, those that believe we shouldn't cut, you're looking at Feds George and Rosengren, both likely to dissent, to dissent again. So that wouldn't really come as too much of a shock when those numbers come through uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, so they, they're likely to dissent again uh, tonight if the Fed cuts rates. Um, they will have some company, the Fed September dot plot of interest rate projections. So five officials didn't favour the cut delivered at the meeting and another five who saw no need for another cut this year. Since then, there has been, yes, the manufacturing slump, yes, negative trade talks that have come through. Brexit is still not uh, resolved and global growth. Uh, across the world is, is still not great and that's led to this uh, another rate cut being priced in but you're going to have some people in the Fed camp that aren't going to be too happy with that so I've just you know while recently we've seen the dollar weaken we've seen stocks push higher gold is still elevated overall it could be a bit of room for all of those to 
uh, come under the pressure uh, as well. So this all creates a, a possibility of a surprise. Uh, economists putting at 20% odds that the FOMC will decide not to cut on Wednesday. So we've gone from 90% at the beginning uh, to a possible 20% no-cut rate change. That, for me, all brings in the opportunity for a good interest rate decision. Touch wood, obviously, you know, when we're going and, and delivering it live, it will uh, be an interesting one and, and opportunities to trade from it. Uh, but 20% chance there. Uh, any pause who would also certainly be opposed by the big man himself, Donald Trump. So uh, expect him to be on the wires post 6 and then 6.30 uh, as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see for that. So just having a, a look back at the uh, the calendar for, for the day, just to wrap things up before I'm going to quick look over the charts, it's going to be a busy one. You've got the EU numbers, as mentioned, uh, at 10 o'clock. Before that, the German uh, unemployment uh, rate and unemployment change, 8.55. ADP uh, starts off the afternoon with then the Bank of Canada rate decision, German preliminary uh, CPI numbers and then obviously the, the DOE coming in earlier around 2.30 and, and the Fed 6 o'clock, 6.30 press conference. It's going to be a good day and uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Uh, opportunity wise, are you going to want to get too involved uh, in the dollar beforehand? I guess it's, it's a case of letting the trade come to you again. We've already had yesterday's high tested in the euro pretty much to the tick. So you could argue that we're, we're looking quite technical already. Yesterday's afternoon lows, a nice double bottom around 128.63. We're just finding support on a previous high of the day. But I would be also marking up that triple bottom that we had from yesterday uh, and then the low uh, on the 25th. Uh, as well. So a couple of areas really to keep an eye on and these would be where I'd more just wait for price to come to for the for oh this is the pound sorry for the pound and then the euro as of course we broke through of course uh, yesterday's high. Uh, I'll be marking up that triple bottom uh, from yesterday's low, the low of the morning as well and a couple of levels in between but really just wait for price to come and before looking to, to get too involved uh, I reckon. S&P and gold no harm in, in sitting on the hands ahead of the Fed and, and start planning for different scenarios. So ahead of any uh, potential shock, you are completely ready. Uh, just like, um, for example, you know, a, a returning server in tennis is prepared for a you know a slice serve, serve out wide, serve, serve to the inside, and they know their reactions already ahead of that. And that's very much what I'd be looking to do today. If that was to be the 20% that they keep rates on hold, what am I going to do? What markets am I going to trade? If it comes in as expected, then what's the opportunity? Or is it a case of waiting to 6.30? Uh, oil will run through as we go through the day for the DOE. Uh, just a quick uh, look at the API uh, candle. You can see from 8.30, very small reaction, usually is the case. Uh, and this market contained again by what was strong resistance to now be support. So keeping an eye around 54.68. The level we're trading now, while chopped up yesterday, is important. Also keeping an eye on any potential retest of this trend line. However, we would have to come through an important area around $56 to get there uh, as well. Any questions as usual, guys, too, please let us know. Just remember we're, we're online live on YouTube from half five. So any questions ahead of the Fed, please do let us know and we can include them. Uh, as well. Hope you have a, a good morning, uh, good afternoon, and I'll catch you all later on.